working outdoors. I've always, I always knew I'd end up out working outdoors. When I went to school, I ended up helping the gardener. I had a couple of indoor jobs. Couldn't really stick the indoor environment. That dark stuff there, yep. that dark stuff was thatch at one point. Now it's turned into fibre, which, okay. which, is, which like resembles a coconut matting. That's thatch in its worst state. If there was any moisture in that, you'd push it together like that and water would come out and it would hold it, the moisture in that top there. Water is a thing that holds the soil together after the roots. Once the roots of sort of the plants starting to te deteriorate, and the soil's drying out. Um, the water is kind of the glue that holds it together. It's not very healthy. But that's what I'm on about the, the single column of soil which you need. You want as much rebound. And if you see here, there's a bit of litter in the top, but there's no actually none into the soil. You can see the history of the square. You feel how hard that is? I've been here 10 years and probably about that much there is probably all the top dressings that I've put on since I've been here. Something like this you have, you have to kind of nurture and build up. Yeah, there's nothing instant really. Within your lifetime, would you say that there's been a shift in the science of yeah. groundsmanship? When I trained, I think it was very basic. We control what grasses are in our squares now. At a higher end, we, we pick which grasses we want. We can spray out the ones we don't want. Machinery we use to scarify. There's, there's some big machinery out there now. There's been a lot of studies on how to prepare wickets, rolling programs, that roller, how it impacts on the, on the soil profile. There's been studies um, which the ECB have paid for um, at Cranfield University, so we can see the effects of rolling. And we probably roll as half the amount that we used to. So we're saving a lot of diesel and a lot of our own time as well to achieve the same results, if not even better, because we're not over rolling. It's kind of a job where you kind of get sucked into it and it becomes more of a, a lifestyle yeah. because you like to be around the cricketers, around the team. And, in, and as a cricket groundsman, you're very much involved in the team. If they didn't get any runs, it was probably a bad pitch. If it's too flat, there's not enough in it for the bowler. The bowler mm -hmm. would say, oh, it wasn't a very good pitch. So you have to weigh all that up as well. Spin bowlers will get, get into that and work on these areas. And it gets very difficult. It, it, makes a, it, it makes for a result in the end. Because the spinners will finish the game off in these rough areas. Because you can imagine a ball, once it's leaving less grass than that, it's going to turn, it's going to do all sorts of puff up and it's going to be very difficult to bat on. So. My favourite part of the year is when we renovate and we put all the new seed in and you nurture it through the winter, then you nurture it through the spring. Obviously in the season you have to kind of punish it a bit and then you've got to nurture it to get it back to recover. At the end of the day they pay to play cricket here and, and my job is to produce wickets and that means the grass is going to take a battering. You know, in the ideal world I'd like no one to play here and it would just be my big back garden and it would all look wonderful but, you know, they're not going to pay me to do that. 